charge. So we're going to calculate charge that uh, resides on an aluminum sphere, two aluminum spheres that are carrying the same uh, amount of charge. Each sphere has a mass of 160 milligrams and these uh, spheres are at the ends of uh, massless strings, 28 centimeters long. The strings are attached at a common point uh, above the spheres and we want to know what charge they have uh, in a situation where they repel each other such that they're 1.4 centimeters apart. So if I make a, a quick sketch of this, not to scale necessarily, but uh, the two strings are at a common point up above and we have 28 centimeters for each string and we've got 1.4 centimeters between the two objects. So that's what we're looking with. And there's a weight downward here. There's electrical repelling force since they carry the same sign of charge. They're repelling each other. I'm going to focus in on just one of the spheres and uh, make a little force diagram. And again, not to scale with uh, distances and angles, but we have the string up to this point here. It's going to have tension in this string there's going to be the weight of the uh, aluminum sphere directed downward and then I've chosen the sphere on the left so the electrical force uh, is repelling it's off to the left and we're going to uh, obtain our value for Q uh, through Coulomb's law uh, that the electrical force is equal to K Q1, Q2 over R squared. Our Q is the charge on each object. It's going to be the same Q for this problem. And R is the distance between. We'll uh, need to convert to meters to get standard metric units. K is a constant 9 times 10 to the 9th. So we want to access uh, the value of Q through Coulomb's law. We do have an unknown force here, the tension. And let's see how we can eliminate that unknown force. Well, the uh, sphere here is in equilibrium, so the x components add to zero for the force, the y components of the force add to zero. There's going to be some angle theta that this string is away from vertical. Let's see if we can uh, uh, determine that angle theta. Let's do that first. We don't have to, but let's go ahead. Um, so here is uh, a right triangle and we know that we've got 28 centimeters along the distance of the string and what do you think the distance of this dotted line is if there's 1.4 centimeters between the two objects and this line comes straight down from the anchor point uh, you should be dividing that so 0.7 centimeters between them so I have knowledge of the side that's opposite to the angle and the hypotenuse. You should be thinking sine. Sine of theta is 0 0.7 over 28 centimeters in both cases. And if you would divide those two numbers, 0.7 divided by 28, you come up with 0 0.025. So the sine of theta equals 0 0.025. Mathematically, to access the theta to get it out of the control of the sine function, I need to apply the inverse sine to both sides of this equation. So I'm going to do that here. Sine inverse sine of sine of theta equals inverse sine of 0 0.025 inverse sine and sine, these are inverse functions of each other and they cancel, leaving us with theta. On your calculator you would invoke the inverse sine function and again uh, sine to the minus one notation, this does not mean one over sine theta. It's a special function, the inverse sine function. So make sure you access the uh, uh, inverse sine function probably using a second key on your calculator and then pushing the sine button. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do that here. I get 1.433 degrees. Again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode to uh, check agreement with my 
answer here. Um, so if you need help on that step, uh, ask your instructor on taking inverse sine. So the tension is going to have a y component and an x component, t sub y and t sub x. So let's write out the forces that exist in the x direction. To the right, we're going to have this x component of the tension. And we find this t sub x value by using the sine function. Uh, the sine of theta would be t sub x over t. So if we want t sub x, we need to multiply by t here. So we would have t sine theta. Fe goes to the left, so that's a negative force. And equals 0. In the y direction, the t sub y is the adjacent side. So cosine of theta equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. If I multiply both sides of that equation, I get t cosine theta for the value of t sub y. mg is downward, so that will be a negative. Then I'm going to rewrite this. Um, and just to save a little space, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add Fe to both sides. I'm going to add mg to both sides of this equation. And then I'm going to divide the two equations. So we get t sine theta. And there's Fe on the right side. This would be t cosine theta, the y equation. And mg on the other side. This is perfectly legal. If I have two equations, I can divide the left sides and set that equal to the division of the right sides. And we see now the advantage of this is we cancel off the unknown tension. In addition, the sine divided by cosine is tangent. So, And then I'm going to save a little step again. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by mg. So I'll have mg tangent theta equals Fe. So we're making progress. We know the mass of the uh, sphere. We know 9.81 for the acceleration due to gravity. We know the theta. And we can get a value for the electrical force. But instead of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and just put in the electrical force in symbols. And then we'll put in numbers. So mg tangent theta equals k. The two q's are the same. So instead of writing q times q, I'm going to write q squared. And then we divide by r squared. And just rearranging again, multiply both sides by r squared, divide both sides by q, I would obtain an equation that q squared is equal to r squared mg tangent theta divided by k. I'm starting to run out of uh, paper here for you. Sorry about that. So q squared is r squared. Multiply to both sides by r squared. mg tangent theta. And I've divided both sides by k. That will give us q squared. So let's go ahead and put in numbers. So the q squared, if I use our values here, r is the distance from charge to charge. And I need to have that in meters. So 1.4 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. That r is squared. The mass is 160 milligrams. 160 times 10 to the minus 3 grams. I need kilograms. To go from grams to kilograms, there's a conversion factor that's another thousand factor smaller. So we get 160 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms. I need to use standard metric units for this mass. I can't use grams. I have to use kilograms. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then tangent of 1.433 degrees. We have to divide by the electrical constant. That is 9 times 10 to the 9th, approximately. Very close in standard metric units. So at this point, you ought to pause and uh, inspect. Make sure you know how I substituted for each value, how I did the conversion from grams to kilograms. And uh, go ahead and calculate a number. 
So welcome back. And on your calculator, perhaps, you'll have that Q squared is 8.551 times 10 to the minus 19. We can't stop there, however. We want the value for Q, not Q squared. So take a square root of both sides. And we get square root of Q squared gives us Q. The square root of uh, this value gives us 9.5. 2.5 rounding off 10 to the minus 10 coulombs. If you uh, want to get to a prefix, let's go for the nano prefix. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. How do I write the number if I change this to 10 to the minus 9 coulombs? I'm making this power uh, 1 greater. It's going from minus 10 to minus 9. When I make the power greater, I have to make the number smaller to move the decimal place like this. And finally, Q would be 0 0.925 nanocoulombs. So we were able to compute the charge uh, that exists on aluminum spheres that repel each other 1.4 centimeters given this length of string given this mass for each charge, uh, charged object, the aluminum. Um, we made use of some trigonometry to come up with a value for theta. We made use of the concept of equilibrium, that these two uh, charged spheres are not moving, not accelerating. So they have uh, a balance in the x direction for force and a balance in the y direction for the forces. We wrote the x and y components of the tension and then divided the two equations to cancel off the unknown tension. We come up with an expression for the electrical force. We write out the Coulomb's law, kq squared over r squared. We algebraically manipulate that to solve for q squared and then we put in metric numbers for our calculation. And again, q is uh, 9.25 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs. Keep practicing.